that uh, a study came out that said the war on terror is actually increasing terrorism. Look, when they killed Osama bin Laden, he actually had a list with him where he lived of how many members of Al-Qaeda there are and how, how they rank. You know how many people were on that list? 170. We blew four trillion dollars when all is said and done. Chasing down 170 people in Al-Qaeda. Right? Now that's only half the part of the picture. The other part of the picture is just invading a country that had absolutely nothing to do with attacking us on 9-11 because George W. Bush is a moron. Right? But, I mean, think about that, man. And look, in Afghanistan, too. You know how many members of Al-Qaeda there are in Afghanistan? A hundred. So the other 70 are either dead or caught or don't know where the hell they are. There's a hundred members of Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. And even under the Democratic president, the one who's, who's more right than the other party, we're keeping 68,000 troops there. We have 68,000 troops there right now. To fight a hundred dudes, and those dudes have slingshots and weapons from the 1980s? Sounds like a little overreaction, don't you think? And what happens, by the way, in these wars is that we end up creating so-called terrorists. Because natives of Iraq and Afghanistan, Iraq when we were there, Afghanistan now, right? What they do is they pick up a rifle to defend their homeland from the foreign invaders. And what do people in the U.S. think? And what do people in the government think? They, how dare they? How dare they try to defend their homeland from us? No, obviously when we invade, you lay down and you take it. Could you imagine if, if, if you switch roles and uh, Mexico invaded Texas? Would Texas take that view? Oh, well, goodness, you know, they're invading. Well, let me lay down and let them get whatever they want. Of course not! Of course not! <laughs> but you see, that's how we operate. We operate on a complete double standard because we don't care about common sense and logic and rationality and ethics and morals. Right? We say, well, wait a second, look, it's us. It's us. So we get to do whatever we want. But then they don't get to do whatever they want. 68,000 troops to fight 100 dudes, man. Look, it's hard to come to any other conclusion... But, you know what? I think these guys, we might not be fighting all over the world for freedom and democracy. No! You don't say! It's, it's painfully obvious that that's the case. And you know how you can, it's easy to determine that, right? I mean, there's a, a thousand ways where we could look at that and know that that's true, right? But, look, North Korea, for example. Right? Or Saudi Arabia is even better. Saudi Arabia is one of the most brutally repressive governments out there. I mean, they, li women literally have no rights. They're not allowed to drive. They're electronically monitored by their husbands. Right? Or North Korea, where they, they have uh, work camps, where if you uh, disagree with the government or you do something wrong, you go to a labor camp for your entire life. And they feed you very little. I, we're going to get to a story about North Korea in a second. In fact, we'll do it right after this one. So if we're really fighting for, for freedom and democracy, well, obviously you go to fight Saudi Arabia or you go to fight North Korea. Or you go to take down Assad, right? The Assad regime in Syria. He's a dictator. He's repressing his people. That's not freedom. But no, we don't do that. We only invade places where there's a strategic uh, advantage for us to do it. And in fact, I mean, it's, it's sadly true that we just use that, yeah, yeah, we're fighting uh, terrorism as like, you know, a rationalization as an afterthought. 